Welcome to the podcast The Embodiment Talks, a podcast by The Embodiment Lab with Mujon van Opijnen. Taking your role as change agent of societal or education systems requires vision and courage. This podcast will help you take this pioneer's role with more body awareness and confidence, without losing sight of the connection with others. We dive into how we as humans are hardwired, how systems change works, and how both are related. I will take you on my own quest, and I will share background information, talk to experts, and share exercises. We will think, feel, and act. Great that you're here, and happy listening. Welcome at this new episode of the Embodiment Talks. And I've been publishing several interviews with people, which I'm really excited about because it's so nice to talk to so many people and um, they always give me new insights. Um, so I really enjoy doing those interviews. But I also thought like, okay, it's time now again to um, to record my own, um, my, own, my own episode. And um, because there's so many times a day I have like, oh, I can make a podcast about this or I can make a podcast about that. And then I, I often don't do that. So I thought, okay, today I'm going to record a podcast. So here I am. And it's also the first time that I'm actually video recording the podcast as well. So up till now, I've been publishing them on YouTube, but just with a fixed picture on it. And um, so this is like a kind of a trial to see how it goes if I um, record them and upload them on, uh, on YouTube as well. So if you prefer to watch the video, then just go to YouTube and otherwise just stay here in your favorite podcast app. What I'd like to talk about today is about the difference between meaning and understanding and why that is actually very important in, um, in change. And especially if we want to, um, to make change for change from a, an embodied space. Um, before I dive a little bit deeper into that, I'd like to say a few words about my therapeutic practice and what I learned about understanding and meaning in my therapy sessions, um, because that gives me a basis or um, uh, yeah, that's where I depart from when I look at, um, at the change, um, embodied change. So what I see in my practice is that many, many clients that I get in my practice, they already had a lot of um, cognitive therapy. So they have a huge understanding of their story. They can share their, their experiences throughout life and, um, uh, and, and even say, say or share with me like why they have certain um, patterns now and where it comes from and they, it's kind of a storytelling. Often I also notice that it's not always um, connected with the body or with the feelings. So it's, it's a factual story of something that happened in their life. It's sometimes it's even like, oh, I met my neighbor, but then it's about something really severe that they actually talk about and um, that happened in their life, but it's at a tone and a way of talking about it as you had a nice meeting with your neighbor the same day. So, um, in the case that it, it, it's a serious, issue in your life, then you'd expect to, to also hear some, some, um, feelings or emotions. Um, uh, so, and, and when that's not there, that's also, that's often why they come to my place because, um, as they know the story and they, they've made changes in their, in their behavior, but they still feel like there's still something there in my, in my body that it's, it's not, it's not released as much as I thought it would when I would go in therapy. And then we start working with the body. And then what actually happens is that the understanding changes in kind of meaning. And meaning means that um, a, certain, um, a certain insight or a certain situation gets, gets meaning to somebody. And it's not like, oh, now I know why it happened but it gives a basis for um, meaning to the physical sensations that somebody, for example, feels in their body. And from there, people can start um, making change. Oh, now I really felt it. This is, oh, this is what happens inside of me. So when I feel this, then I can do something different. 
And there the cognition plays a role, role as well because it's a choice to do something different. And, um, and it's, it's the words that, that give meaning to what the client experiences in a session. Um, so meaning also has a cognitive side, which is through the words that we use, but it doesn't come, it's a bottom-up experience that gets words. And um, if we look at understanding, it often is a top-down um, understanding of why we have certain behavior or why we have certain patterns. So now if I, if I translate this to change, why would... Um, this more bottom-up be important and giving meaning to the bottom-up feelings in um, change processes. And also here, what we often see is that there is understanding of a situation. Like if we now look outside, I mean, I think if we now look outside, it's quite, it's quite turbulent. Um, there's a war going on in the Ukraine. There's, we've really experienced the climate change over this, um, over this summer with a huge drought, at least here in the Netherlands. And, um, uh, but by now we start actually feeling it. And what I noticed that we now feel it and um, is that the discussions and how we talk about it actually really changes. And um, we're much more willing to really make change. And it doesn't count for everybody. I mean, there's still people that um, I just want to go on in the same in the same way. But I do see that the crowd of people that really wants to come to change um, for whatever reason is much bigger because we actually felt it. And we've been able to give words to what we feel. And, um, and we have heard others talking about it as well. And it resonates with me because we have kind of a similar, similar experience. Um, so that's, that, that's an example of how that, um, that something gets meaning, um, can, um, spark the change can be, um, uh, an accelerator to, um, to create change. And I'd like to give another example as well. Um, I work with a group of students and we were in a huge, beautiful building next to a canal in Amsterdam. And um, it was a very old building with um, uh, a very old wooden table in the middle of that, um, of that room. The, the group of students was rather small, so we had, I think we had 12 students or so. And and we were sitting around that table and we were discussing some things. And at one point I said, like, let's just see whether we can kind of experience. We were talking about new and old ways of our traditional and um, more innovative ways of, of leading and management. And I said, OK, let's just see whether we can um, make, make living statues out of that. So um, one of the students, he stood up and um, climbed on that table, that huge table. And I was like, okay, hope oh, doesn't get damaged, which it didn't. But, um, and he was standing there and he was looking down on everybody else and telling how the other students had to uh, position themselves. And he was just really organizing that living statue of how he viewed management. And at first he seemed to be, um, uh, to, to really enjoy that. And at one point he said, like, okay, can I come down again? And I said, like, yeah, yeah, why? Is, you know, and he, he actually said, like, oh, I feel really uncomfortable here. And then I thought, okay, now it gets interesting because that is the feeling that it gave him. Before that, he was like, okay, this is how, what it should look like. And by standing there and looking down on all the other students and me, he kind of started experiencing, like, oh, this is, this is really uncomfortable. And by that experience, what it really did to him being in that leading position, that management position, and also having a discussions about the feelings and the emotions that the others got in the more, um, uh, yeah, that, that they were looked upon and, um, uh, and they were in a lower position, that was such a rich experience and 
Um, and that actually was that allowed for opening the discussion about, OK, but what would be other ways of um, leading people? What what made it uncomfortable to you when you were standing up there? What made it uncomfortable to you when you were just staying on the floor and looking up at him? And um, what, what would you have wanted as another position? Um, and then when we discussed that, we kind, could kind of make a living statue out of that as well. And also again, feel into that. And was it different or was it, was it, was it the same? So that, that really allowed for opening up towards new structures. And I think this is a really nice example why the experience that um, they had in their bodies um, and the discomfort that they actually felt, that we also gave words to that. And therefore, I believe that that although in in the therapy world, it's either cognition or it is more somatics and body um, or body or body oriented um, therapies, um, it's it's both has a place in in development and it both has a place in in change. So now the question is, um, how can you um, organize that for yourself? And I think already from this example, you can get some ideas to work with that yourself, because what you could do is that if you if you are in a situation and you just notice that there is only talking about that it's talking about concepts, that it is um, uh, a lot of talking from the understanding part, um, then see whether you can actually become still. Because it needs attention, it needs, you know, diving into your your body takes time. So come still or try the posture that en enhance a little bit of the feelings that you have or the posture that comes with the situation. And then see what happens inside of you. And and maybe you can give that words and even if that's not like words in public, then maybe you can still give it words inside yourself like, OK, this is the physical sensations that I notice. I notice that I tense, that my muscles tense. I notice that I don't breathe entirely and um, uh, maybe you have some some tingling feeling somewhere or some trembling or whatever um, and then move up to um, okay, what what is the mood that I get get from this? Does it make me happy, or does it actually make me a little bit crumpy, or do I get sad? Um, do I feel uh, anxious about it? So, what's the the emotional feeling that you get, or what's the the mood that you get from it? And then from there, you can see whether there's words or pictures or um, yeah, a way for yourself to kind of um, put it into a more cognitive thing. And if you if you want and if you dare, then of course you can um, you can share that with the group as well. Okay, I hope this gives you some understanding of the difference. Understanding, interesting of understanding. Um, so that this gives you some um, some insights in in how that cognition has an important part to play as well in um, embodied leadership or um, somatics change or however you want to call it um, but how it's different from um, how we usually use our understanding to situations so that the if we give meaning through the embodiment that it plays another role so i hope this was insightful for you thank you for listening and i'm looking forward to see you again at my next episode. Great that you listened to this episode of the Embodiment Talks. Please let me know your thoughts about this episode or the insights that you gained. Email me to the address in the show notes. If you want to get in touch with me or if you have a question or topic that you want to know more about, don't hesitate to send me an email as well. Do you want to be kept up to date? Like this podcast in your favorite podcast app. You can help me by giving a thumbs up or leaving a comment so that this podcast will reach more people. You can find more information about my work on my website www.embodimentlab.nl or my YouTube channel Embodiment Lab. 
Thanks for listening and meet you at the next episode.